from AP News. New York governor regrets saying black kids in the Bronx don't know what a computer is. You don't say. <laughs> I don't understand how New York Welcome to the to Democratic her Party. He regrets Yo, she it, I'm legit shocked. said that in an interview. Do they have she, the... We should find the video of it. Let me, let, me, let me pull up the video on X. Dude, it is absolutely wild that this is genuinely what they believe. And uh, it reminds me of that Ami Horowitz video where he, he goes to these Berkeley students. Everyone's seen it. And he's like, is voter ID racist? And they're like, yeah, because, you know, uh, black people don't know what a, how, to, how to get on the internet or where the DMV is. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. So Young bad. black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. And I want the world open up to all of them because when you have their di diverse voices innovating solutions through technology, then you're really addressing society's broader challenges. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to play it again. Young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word computer is. She did say young kids. And we know that a kid is under the age of 12. And so on the younger side could be four, maybe four-year-olds don't know what the word computer is. Take that MAGA. Like Hillary, super, remember her super predator comment? This is <laughs> yeah. like Hillary, right? Or she said kids, maybe she means baby goats. And I don't think goats know what computers yeah. are. I mean, like she's talking about the actual color black baby goat. And she's trying to help farms, but Republican bigots are always thinking it's about race. They don't believe in urban agriculture like Kathy Hochul does. Right. In all seriousness, Democrats are actually racist. Talk down to minorities. They, they, uh, 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 it's not, it's, it's, it's not talking down is the right way to describe it. They, they, uh, uh act stupid. Yeah. yeah. They infantilize black people according to Yale. And this is how they view the world. Democrats have always been the racist party thinking they're better. I mean, this is literally the argument of the Confederates. Mm -hmm. They're just like, we are, are better learned and civilized and the savage must be tamed. And that's basically how they still view minorities. The idea that there is a racist party and a not racist party is absolutely clown world BS. And if you buy it, I'm laughing at you. Well, but, but there is. There's the Democratic racists and the Republicans who aren't. There, well, there's Democrats <laughs> that are racist, but I've, I, there are Republicans that are racist too. There are conservatives that are racist. Like, it is not, like, everybody got some hate on them. So, it, like, putting yeah, but, it up at, at one Kathy Hochul group. thinks that there appears to be a third world country in the middle of New York. Kathy I mean, Hochul is just stupid. But she's the governor. That's who they pick. They well, picked sick. this woman to represent them. That seems crazy to me. Stupid and racist. <laughs> Stupid and racist. Yes. Yeah, well, enough. it's funny because the you know Republicans are always you know like jumping over every po jumping in every possible hoop to stress that they're not racist, and then the Democrats are always the one making the faux pas, kind of like admitting what they really think. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> But then everybody thinks, no, 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 if you're conservative, you have to be racist. She said, of course, black children in the Bronx know what computers are. The problem is that they too often lack access to the technology needed to get on track to high paying jobs in emerging Driver industries licenses. like AI. That's why I've been focused on increasing economic opportunity since day one of my administration and will continue that fight to ensure every New Yorker has a shot at a good paying job. She's still basically saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. When Ami Horowitz went out, in one of the greatest videos of all time. And he asked these Berkeley students if voter ID was racist and they all said yes. And they were saying ridiculous things like black people don't know where the DMV is and they don't have the internet and they don't have phones. And so he goes to, what did he go? He went to the Bronx, right? Or did he go to Harlem? I'm not sure. Like he, went, he went to New York and he went to a black neighborhood and he was like, he didn't ask him about voter ID. He just went, do you have an ID? And they were like, yeah. And he's like, was it hard to get? And they're like, no. And it's like, do you know anybody without an ID? And they're like, what do you mean? Everybody's got an ID. Like, you, you go and get it. He has this one young guy, and he's like, what are you talking about? Like, everybody, you're 16, you go get your ID. Like, what do you mean? And he's like, oh, I'm just wondering. And then, of course, and then he asks one young guy, he's like, do you have access to the internet? And he's like, yeah. Like, what? Well, I got it on my phone right here. And he's like, do you think kids have access to the internet? And he's like, every kid's got internet. They just get on a phone. But the best interaction of all, was when he asks this older guy, he's like, do you know where the DMV is? He goes, yeah, you just uh, make a left up here on 25th. Like he thought he was asking for directions because the stupidest thing in the world to ask somebody if they know how to get to the DMV. Of course, it's right over there. But they're like dozens of times for all of my needs. The world Democrats live in, it's like they isolate themselves, surround themselves by other affluent white liberals and then tell each other how superior they are and how racist everyone else is.
What do you think, Jay? It's ultimate double think. Yeah, it's really weird. I don't know. I mean, I mean, the greatest sin you can commit in our society is something quote racist. Uh, the Democrats do this all the time. Uh, it's just it's bizarre. It's weird. We we live in an Orwellian double think. Do you think they can get away with it more than oh absolutely yeah. like just because they have the right letter at the end of the yeah. name? Yeah, I don't know. I just think we shouldn't live in their world. We got to build our own parallel economy. You know, sell our own coffee <laughs> and music. You know, and well, culture. You could send missionaries to the Bronx and teach young children about computers. Apparently, according <laughs> to Kathy Holt, like the the everyone has verbal gas, but some of these ones are so like a slip of the mask. It feels like, oh, yeah. you really think that your your world is inaccessible to to young people of a different race than you, and that that is creepy and weird. I think that the. One of the things that I have learned or noticed about the whole CRT thing and, and the woke people is is racism is something that we can try to try to minimize, but th that is something that's in most people and they it comes out when they say the dumbest stuff and and I don't know that you can actually like get rid of it and I think that the best option is try not to focus on it like. You know, like the woke people do, because I think when you focus on it, only it only manifests in bad ways. But I think that like the idea that people aren't going to have those kind of slips is probably, you know, you probably expect people to be, you know, inhuman if you think that they're not going to slip and say dumb stuff like that. You know, not that I'm making excuses, but like. No, but just it as the governor, it's like, do you understand what the breakdown of your community is? And being the governor of New York is obviously slightly complicated because you have very urbanized New York City, but then you have a lot of the state that's that's different. It's more rural. There are some other mid-sized cities. Um, but, you know, anytime she now signs some sort of educational bill, right? And she's like, well, I want to send computers to all these places or do whatever. You, It calls into question what she actually thinks of her constituents and if she actually has an understanding of their needs. Like if she meant to say these students who live in the Bronx may not have a computer in their home, I would have understood. But just assuming they don't know what it is seems like you are actually the ignorant person. Well, she's got She's talking about like she's got a, an image in her head. You know, she's not talking about. She doesn't know who she's supposed to be representing. Yeah, like when yeah, she imagines I mean, the Bronx, she's thinking North Sentinel Island. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't want to ruin that for her. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with Just North let Island. her live her life. She's can, only the governor of this state. Can we go back to what Democrats were saying 20 years ago where like Quentin Tarantino was always arguing that you should shout the N word from the top of every building. Remember that? Like, but is now, that actually what he said? Yeah, there was an article. He gave an interview and they were like, what do you think about free speech? He was like, I think we should go out. We should shout the N word from the top of every building. Why was that and then he did in all of his movies. And then he does. It's like, dude, but we, then he's like, you know, yeah, like super Democrat, anti, you know. It's like we watch Pulp Fiction and I'm kind of wondering, like, Quentin, did you just really want to say the N-word as much as possible? And he wasn't hiding it, apparently. He's giving interviews being like, yes. Yeah. yeah. From the top of a building. It's like he wrote himself a character that literally just keeps saying it over and over and over again. And it's like, okay, well, like, we get it, man. You know what I mean? Like, But then he's like the most, you know, he'll go after anybody that's, you know. But he has the right like, letter at the end of his name. A racist, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, right, exactly. That's how, that, that's, that everyone talks about the past. That you get it if you have a D next to your name. Otherwise, it, it doesn't matter. But I think the, the, the important takeaway from all of this is, um, I, I, I'd be willing to bet, because I'm an egotistical dick, that if, I, if you were to play a clip of the North Sentinel Island joke to Democrats, they'd go, I don't get it. And the average Republican... Uh, I would I would say they, they'd probably go, eh, Tim, that was a bad joke. Yeah, but they but they understand what North Sentinel Island is. And it's like it's like what you were saying about people who listen to talk radio of like longer attention spans. And I also think that there's a correlation between today being on the right and being smart and being on the left and being not smart. Of course, they're adamant that they are very smart. Because Stephen Colbert told them 20 years ago that reality has a liberal bias. I like your theory so much. I don't care if it's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, um, you know, it's like, what was it, Johnny Rotten? You mm -hmm. know, never never did I think that the, the right would be the cool anti-establishment ones and the left would be the whiny twats trying to ban everything. And it's like, well, you know, there you are. I think that uh, you watch someone like Bill Maher and... Every episode, it's just like, my guy, do you read the news? 
And I think probably the most embarrassing thing ever for Bill Maher was when he read the quote from Jack Posobiec that mm -hmm. was an obvious joke. And you could tell he realized the last minute as he's reading it, he's <laughs> reading a joke. And then he's like, ah, are they really saying this? And it's like, wow, Bill, you're so dumb. But he knew. And, he, and he's like, well, don't quit your day job. Jack's day job is political commentary. Why would he quit? He's not a comedian. Mm -hmm. And But it was funny either way. They've become the party of cult-like, ignorant, mindless drones. And just looking at the ignorance of his panel, you know, Batya Angar Sagran's like, Bill, that was a joke. He was making fun of the media reaction over these things. And he's like, oh, but then you watch the Prager interview, you watch the Don Lemon interview, and he just shows over and over and over again, the dude ha has like, he has no understanding of modern goings on. So if I were to make a joke about North Sentinel Island, a lot of people are going to say, yeah, sure, like it was a weak joke, Tim, and that's fine, but you know what North Sentinel Island is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, that's kind of the, the sad reality of things. Do you think humor extends to all parties or do you think there's sort of a, a chasm between the, the types of humors people on the political spectrum can tolerate? <sighs> Tough question. I think uh, certain, I mean, there's double standards everywhere. Uh, and also I think that people aren't, they're less and less understanding humor precisely because of the, of the dumbing down. So people can't grasp like things having multiple meanings different senses nuance that's very important in humor uh comedy requires that it requires a kind of a high iq you have to have you know some knowledge of things and understand the sense in which people but i think a lot of young people especially like the rise in autism rates and all that that's creating a kind of a young generation that sees everything as very literal very you know the, the people you're talking about with, in terms of like social justice uh you know protesters that are very black and white very literal everything is is a is, a, uh, is as it is nothing is nuanced i put out a few tweets uh last week or, or maybe two weeks ago that went viral they were obvious jokes you know to the same point that you're making about jack's jack's tweets and like i was reading through the comments and probably half of the commenters couldn't grasp a very obvious joke the, the nuance yeah. that was there obviously it was obvious so i think that i mean there's a lot going on but i'm really worried about uh you know going back to the point earlier about the scroll and the feed like people are something's going on with whatever's going on with young people that they're not getting educated like they're they're missing some sort of wiring yes. yeah they're spending all their time on tiktok and yeah. they're flicking through minute long videos and understanding nothing thanks for watching this clip from the timcast irl podcast hang out with us live monday through friday at 8 p.m and become a member over at timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.